With so many questions surrounding exactly what happened in that fatal encounter between Michael Brown and that police officer, there are new calls for police officers to be equipped with body cameras. It's a measure that has support but also raises some concerns. Here's NBC's Mark Potter. In the Michael Brown shooting, the only publicly known videos were taken right after he was shot to death, when two distinctly different accounts surfaced. Police say the officer killed Brown after the teen tried to take his gun, but witnesses say Brown's hands were in the air when the officer shot him. Many believe if the officer had been wearing a camera, many questions could be answered. The audio video would have, uh, you know, potentially provided that or at least have given us a starting point, you know, to provide the rest of the information. More than a thousand U.S. police departments are now equipping officers with body cameras. It's the same idea behind patrol car dash cams, which have gathered evidence for decades. Body cameras create a near perfect record because they're a complete video and audio recording of the entire incident. In the spring of 2013, body cameras rolled as police entered a Florida college dorm in search of a heavily armed student. Also in Daytona Beach that year, when police burst into a room where they found a man holding a knife to a woman's neck. The ACLU supports police body cams, saying in a statement, cameras have the potential to be a win-win, helping protect the public against police misconduct and at the same time, helping protect police against false accusations of abuse. But many police departments are still working on guidelines on privacy, when camera videos can be released publicly, and how to prevent selective use and editing. Yet many have found an added benefit to police cameras. When we are self-aware and we know that we are being watched, we tend to be simply on our best behavior. Applying to both the police and the public. Mark Potter, NBC News, Ferguson, Missouri.